On average, how many times do you need to toss a fair die until you roll a. a single six, b. two consecutive sixes? This problem comes from the book 50 Challenging Problems in Probability. Take a moment to pause this video and try it out for yourself. All right, let's move on to the solution. Let's start with part A. We know that the probability of rolling a 6 on any given toss is 1 sixth. Further, we know that a geometric distribution describes the number of trials until an event with probability p occurs. Thus, if we use a geometric distribution with probability 1 sixth, we get that the expected number of rolls is simply 6. This may seem like a very easy answer to a trivial problem. However, I challenge you to solve it in a second way. This will become much more useful when we attempt part B. Let's now look at the Markov chain solution to this problem. We start by imagining a sequence of rolls. Let's say for example 2, 1, 1, and so on until we eventually roll a 6. Now we can encode these as one of two states, not 6, and 6. Finally, to solve this as a Markov chain, we need to find the transition probabilities between these two states. Let's start by writing out the states, not 6 and 6. Now, we know that on any given toss, we have a 1 6 chance of going from not 6 to 6 because we have a 1 6 chance of rolling a 6 on any given roll. Thus, we know that we have a 5 6 chance of rolling anything that is not a 6 which tells us the probability of staying in the state not 6 if we start in the state not 6. Now, we can simply denote the expected number of rolls to go from not 6 to 6 as e and solve for e recursively. As we know that e must be 1 6 times 1 since there is a 1 6 chance that we go in one step from not 6 to 6 plus 5 6 times the toss that we just used plus the expected number of rolls to go from not 6 to 6. Solving this out, we get that e is equal to 6, which agrees with our old answer. Now we move on to part b, the number of times we need to roll the fair die until we roll two consecutive sixes. Right off the bat, I'm going to tell you that the answer to this question is not 36. The key insight here is that we can only get sequential sixes after we roll a single six. Therefore, getting sequential sixes is not independent to the event getting a single six. Let's solve for this again using the Markov chain approach. Again, we imagine some random sequence. Let's say for example, three, five, six, so on. Here, we now need to divide our problem into three states, the state not six, the state single six, and then finally the state consecutive sixes. We notice that the state consecutive sixes can only follow the state single six. Thus, let's write out the transition diagram for this Markov chain. Again, we have our three states, not six, six, and consecutive sixes. Similar to part A, we know the transition probabilities from not six to six. Now, we try to find the transition probabilities from six to consecutive sixes. We know that if we are currently at the state six, we still have a 1 6 chance of moving to consecutive 6s. However, the key difference here is that if we roll something that is not a 6, we reset back original state of the Markov chain. Thus, we have a 5 6 chance of falling back a state instead of staying in our current state. Using this transition diagram, let's now solve for the expected number of tosses to get two consecutive 6s. Let's denote the number of tosses we need to get from not 6 to consecutive sixes as e1 and the number of tosses to get from a single six to consecutive sixes as e2. Now, similar to part A, we can solve for both e1 and e2. In e1, we know that there is a one six chance that we move on to the state where e2 is the number of tosses to get to double sixes. Further, we know that there's a five six chance that we remain in e1. Similarly, we can write out the expression for e2. Now that we have both of these expressions, we can try to solve them simultaneously to obtain an answer. Let's start by simplifying them. The first equation simplifies to e1 is equal to e2 plus 6, and the second equation simplifies to e2 is equal to 1 plus 5 6 e1. We can now plug the second equation into the first equation to solve for the expected number of tosses to get two consecutive sixes. This results in 42. As you may have noticed, this is actually greater than 36. 
which shows that if we roll a single dice over and over and over again, the expected number of tosses to get two consecutive sixes is actually greater than the number of tosses we would need to get two double sixes if we rolled two dice at the same time. Does this answer surprise you? Did you guess 36 as well? Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for watching this video. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share.